Hey guys, this is Brent from Sonic Electronics and today we're going to be doing a radio install in this Toyota showing you how to replace your factory radio. Now there's a few things that you need to get ready before tackling this job which is actually pretty easy. The first step is our tools. We need wire strippers, our wire crimpers, possibly some pry tools, maybe a nut driver, a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver are typically the, the tools that are required for the radio installation. Now the great thing is Sonic Electronics does carry every tool here that you see on the table. And the next thing you need is your installation accessory, starting with your zip ties, 18 to 22 gauge pink butt connectors, 14 to 16 gauge blue butt connectors, and your stereo installation kit as well as wiring harness. Great thing is Sonic Electronics, when you buy a radio, we give you the dash kit and the harness for free, and we carry all the variety of connectors and zip ties you could possibly imagine. So the first step to installing your car stereo is disconnecting your battery. The reason for disconnecting the battery is for one, we don't want power flowing through the vehicle, just in case if we short out a wire, uh, we could pop fuses, it's just a nightmare. So let's disconnect the battery here. Now you can do either side, you can do the negative side or the positive side, it's fine. Typically disconnecting the uh, negative side is the most common. So we're gonna go ahead and do that here. Now, if you do do the positive side, let me just give you a hint here. Obviously, my ratchet is metal, right? So if I'm here and I hit the battery uh, hold down bracket or anything accessory wise, you could short out the battery, pop some fuses or have some problems. So be sure when you're ratcheting this not to hit any metal accessories that are near it. So you don't want to short anything out. So step two of your radio install is removing the factory radio. Now, some cars are different in the case where you may start from the top to the bottom. Most cars that I've worked on usually start at the bottom and then work their way up. Now the one thing you want to be careful of is finding the resistance points on the panel, making sure that you're not prying on something that's screwed down. Uh, like for example, right below here, if I pull off this AC switch, that screw is holding the panel in place. So if I pry on this panel, I'm going to break some plastic around here. So we want to be sure that we're very, very careful. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these knobs. And like I said, I'm going to start at the bottom here. So we got our pry tools from X Scorpion. And I'm gonna go ahead and pry this panel up. Perfect. Now, most of the time, you can actually do it with your hands. It's much easier. You could feel the resistance on the panel as well. As you can see, this just slides right out. We do have some connections here to our cigarette lighter. Some plugs. Now, one thing I wanna point out, we got panel clips here. A lot of times, these plastic dashes are held in by these panel clips. So if you hear something fall inside the dash, more than likely, it's these panel clips falling off. So go hunting. Next, we take our Phillips head screwdriver. We see that this particular vehicle has two Phillips head screws holding the panel in here, as well as two here. Remove these screws. All right, so next step, since we got all the screws removed from the panel, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna pull up. As we can see, the plastic, uh, plastic panel clips are just holding this in. So I'm gonna pull, perfect. Now, one thing before I disconnect this panel, I just want to point some things out, and this is why we disconnect the battery. As you see here, we have a passenger. And the passenger light is basically for the passenger airbag. Turns it on or off, etc. And if we don't disconnect the battery and unplug this panel and we start the car, we're going to have an airbag light on our dash column, which the dealer has to clear. Spending a couple hundred bucks just to clear a light is not fun. So make sure you disconnect the battery. If you're not disconnecting the battery, make sure the car is in off position, then unplug this panel. Go ahead and unplug it. Okay. So once we have the panel removed, we have four 10 mils holding this radio in on the top and the bottom area. Now some radios may be held in with seven mils, Phillips head, etc. Every car is a little bit different. So this car we're gonna have our nut driver. Remove these screws. So let's say we have a stubborn screw, bolt, etc. So I've unscrewed it all the way, but it doesn't want to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my nut driver here on top of that screw, and I'm going to pull the radio out. That way that screw doesn't fall into the dash, and you're going to have to go hunting for it. So the next step here is just unplugging the factory connections. Here's our AM and FM antenna. And this is our main car stereo harness right here. So this is the factory harness of the vehicle. With our installation accessories, we're going to go ahead and plug in the wiring harness that's provided for this vehicle, which is a female plugs right into here and decodes the color of the wires for us so that way we're not guessing. All right guys, so step three of our car stereo installation is prepping. The first step is doing our vehicle wiring harness to our aftermarket radio harness, which you see here share all the same colors. So literally all we're doing is matching color for color, utilizing our buck connectors 
or crimp caps or solder and heat shrink, whichever method that you use. The next step is our dash kit. For this particular vehicle, it only came with two side mounts, and this is called an ISO mount. Since we're doing a double din, it's typically a little bit larger and has a lot more weight, so we need to support it. So with this dash kit, it's telling us to utilize the factory mounting brackets that come with the factory radio. So we're just gonna be mounting these to our aftermarket radio and utilizing these side brackets to basically fill in the trim, that way it doesn't stand out of place. All right, so when we come to connecting the harness, the first step here, since I'm using buck connectors, is we strip the wire back using our wire strippers. And I'll give you an example here. Make sure you choose the correct gauge, that way you don't cut through the whole entire wire. It just pulls the wire right off, the actual insulation around the wire. Now when using buck connectors, you want to make sure you twist the wire. That way it's nice and uniform. If we have a wire like this, you know, with strands coming out, it's not going to sit in the buck connector perfectly and we're not going to get a good crimp. So the next step is after we twist the wire, take our buck connector and we're just going to set it on the wire. We've got our crimps and typically the crimps will have a nice little V groove here with a tooth. That's for our buck connector. We'll slide that in and crimp. Now we have a properly connected wire to a buck connector. I'm going to terminate the rest of the wires with this. Now if we have any stragglers left over, say the colors don't match up, what we usually do is just terminate the end with a, like a, basically a buck connector or I could use a crimp cap just a cap off the wire. The reason why we do this is we want to make sure that we don't have any bare wires inside the dash shorting out. Even if you cut the wire, it could still possibly short out. I've done it in the past and it's a pain in the butt having to go back and fix it. All right guys, so once I've connected the harness color for color, as you see here with my buck connectors, I'm gonna go ahead and make it look pretty. Cause if we just put in the car like this, we got a bunch of wires strangling around. We got our ones that are capped off just laying around. It looks really hokey. So I always like to zip tie it, make it look nice and uniform. That way it fits in the dash nicely when you put the radio back in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gather all my wires together. Take one zip tie. So we only need one zip tie on each end. Some guys like using tape, but here's the downside about tape guys. If you tape up this whole entire harness and you have a problem and you need to troubleshoot it, what do you gotta do with the tape? got to remove all the tape. So my suggestion is if you want to tape your harness, put it in the car, make sure it works fine, then tape your harness. Very basic, completed harness, end wires are capped off, everything's wired color to color. It's a good way of managing your wires as well, make it look like a nice, clean, professional install. All right, so once we connected the car stereo harness, it's now time to mount our unit. In this particular application, since we're doing a double din replacement with a factory double din, we're gonna be utilizing Metra supplied brackets here that are just side mounts. And we need to do an ISO mount. So we're gonna be utilizing the factory brackets off the factory car stereo. First, we gotta remove those. So I'm gonna take my nut driver. All right. So we look at the stereo here and we see that left hand. So that tells me this is the left side of the stereo, if you're looking at it directly. So we're gonna take the car, uh, new car stereo, put it up side by side. We're just going to basically move this bracket right over and it's going to slide into, oh, there we go, slid right into its spot. Now the dash kit that we're using from Metro just basically sandwiches on to the factory mounting bracket in this ISO mount application. So we're going to go ahead and put it on in place. Perfect. You can see how it has three mounting holes, or actually four, that all line up. So the screws that are provided with the JVC unit, Kenwood unit, whatever unit that you're utilizing, they're usually a pan head screw like this, a Phillips. We don't use the uh, factory eight mils that came on the Toyota because they typically strip out. They may be too long. You could damage your unit. So we're just going to go ahead and mount our ISO now. All right, guys. So we're just going to go ahead and flip this over and replicate it on the right hand side. All right, guys. So we already did the case of the ISO mount with our double dins here from double din to double din. Now I just wanted to show you one extra step here that if you're doing a single DIN radio installation, it's a tad bit different. Typically you'll get a dash kit here that just has a single DIN opening with a pocket for storage. So if we're going from double DIN to single DIN, this is what we're going to be doing. All right guys, so the first step of caging your unit is making sure we got the proper size opening and we got our cage. The cage is going to slide in. Now it doesn't matter if it's this way or that way, it's universal, so it just slides into place. And the one thing that you want to make sure when you're caging the unit is that the cage rests on the actual plastic lip of the single DIN dash kit. So we got it resting on the lip. Now on the cage, you'll see teeth. These little teeth all wrapping around it. 
These teeth are bent into place by a flathead screwdriver. That way it locks the cage into the dash kit and doesn't fall out of the dash once it's installed. So we're going to start at the bottom. Make sure the dash kit's all the way at the, at the very lip. I'm just going to push down these tabs. Now once we've successfully caged, the unit will just slide in right through the front as so. What we have here is a little locking side tabs, which will lock into place once the stereo is all the way in. And you'll hear it click. Hear that click? The stereo is now successfully caged to the dash kit. It gives you a nice sleek look and we're golden. So once we've successfully ISO mounted our car stereo here and wired up our harness, we are now ready to put the radio into the vehicle as well go on to our next step. All right guys, so on step four of the radio installation, this would be the time to run any additional accessories such as your Bluetooth microphone, your satellite radio antenna, or run your rear USB to your glove box or center console. However, for this installation, we're just doing a basic radio replacement. All right guys, so step five is install the new car stereo. We already got our pre-wired harness here, which will plug in right into the factory connection. Makes it nice and easy for you. So once you hear the click, you know that's successfully connected. Perfect. So we got our stereo, now all we have to do is connect it. So we've got our harness already plugged into the vehicle. Plug it in right in the back here. We got our AM and FM antenna. Also plugging that in the back of the stereo. All right, so once we got everything plugged in, it's now time to slide the radio into place. Make sure that you don't have any wires strangling down here on the bottom so you pinch them. Make sure you get them all tucked. Slide the stereo into place. Since we use the factory mounting brackets in this application, it's actually going to be pretty darn easy. It's just going to slide right into place. All we have to do is bolt it right back in. All right, so the final steps here is basically reassembling the vehicle. Just make sure that you have all your screws and everything set aside so you didn't lose any. And just making sure that everything is plugged in. And this panel slides right back in. So we just want to make sure that we get all the screws right uh, in the correct place here. That's why I usually put them in the cup holder just in case that way I don't lose them. Now it's time just to reconnect the shifter plate. Make sure you don't forget to plug anything in because your cigarette lighter may not work. And this panel just snaps right back in and voila. All right, guys, so we got the finished product here. The radio's installed, working flawlessly. We got the vehicle put back together. Now, there's one thing I want you guys to remember. This is not too difficult for the do-it-yourselfer. The radio install is very straightforward, and the great thing about Sonic Electronics is when you buy a stereo like this, you're going to get a free dash kit and a free wiring harness, which will come with your instructions and guide you step-by-step. -step. Also, check out our knowledge base. We have step-by-step -step guides on how to install car stereos, amplifiers, subs, everything that you could possibly imagine. Now, if you guys have trouble choosing a stereo, Feel free to give one of our knowledgeable sales reps a call at 1-877-289-7664 and we'll be more than happy to guide you along and get you in the right stereo that works for your application. Alright guys, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Once again, this is Brent with Sonic Electronics. Have a great day.